You may think you know a lot about the train at Silver Dollar City. You might have even seen my other video about things you didn't know about the train at Silver Dollar City. But there's still more you very possibly don't know. <laughs> A few months ago, I did a video about eight things that you didn't know about the train at Silver Dollar City. Got a great response, and as I was thinking about it, I realized there's still a lot of things that people probably don't know about the train at Silver Dollar City. So I worked on it a little bit, and I've got another list of eight more things you probably don't know about the train there. So let's just jump right on in. The train originally ran in the opposite direction of the one it goes now. You may have seen some of those old pictures where it looks like the train is going backwards because the closure's on the wrong side of the cars. And, well, it's because originally the train actually ran in the opposite direction. Now, if you're standing in the station, it heads off to the left. It originally left to the right. I don't know exactly how long it ran that way, but at some point they did turn it around and change the direction so it goes the way it goes now. Just kind of a neat little trivia thing for you. The robbery location is actually a different one from where it used to be. Back before they built Barn Swing and Outlaw Run, the train robbery actually used to take place right near where the Barn Swing and Outlaw Run station sit. Not too terribly far from the Roundhouse, actually, and it was on your way back into town. It actually allowed the robbers to be able to go into town on their breaks, pretty easily. But once they decided they wanted to actually start expanding the park out that direction and add in the Lost River and Barn Swing and then eventually Outlaw Run, they realized that location wasn't going to work quite so well for the robbery anymore. So they built a whole new little robber shack out in the woods further out and changed the location of the robbery. The very first time I went to Silver Dollar City back in 2004, the robbery was still at its original location, but out there in the woods, yeah, that's the new one. That's where I got to spend my time. Parts of the script go all the way back to when the Hershians started the train robbery. There's kind of comments from a lot of fans that, wow, it seems like they've been doing the same show forever. Well, there are actually parts of it that go all the way back to the beginning. Much has been added to it, much has been changed. When they have a new line or a fumble that actually works well and gets laughs, they end up keeping it. So it has morphed and changed over the years. It's not the same robbery, but at the same time it is. <laughs> so if you've been riding the train at Silver Dollar City for any length of time, you probably recognize parts of it. And there's parts that the old robbers, we can still jump right on in with scripts and we can probably feed off of each other. I've actually run into guys that robbed trains 10 and 20 years before me, and we were able to get a banner going with the robbery script just like that because so much is similar. And then you just kind of fill in the rest. In fact, what's really cool is that same script actually got used at Tennessee. There was a time when what we know of now as Dollywood was actually Silver Dollar City, Tennessee, and they had a train robbery there as well, and major portions of its script came from the Branson Park. Yep, it's been around a bit. There are actually two timed versions of the robbery show script. You may be going, what? <laughs> You'll notice that depending upon how busy a day is at Silver Dollar City, they will either dispatch the trains approximately every 30 minutes or every 20 minutes. On a busier day, they run the 20 minute schedule so they can get more trains out and more people on the train. It means you've got three trains going an hour as opposed to two when it's a little bit slower. But if it gets busier, it also means they have to make some changes with the robbery. There are some portions of the robbery script that if they're on the faster schedule, that they will actually trim out and chop out to make it a faster paced show. A good example of this is when the conductor comes back up after catching the robbers robbing his train, there is a whole add-on section. For us, it was a whole long mall routine we would do, and it would take about four or five more minutes. But if we were on the shorter schedule, that got chopped out, so that way we could get the train out faster. In fact, that actually led to some of the rumors for a while that the mall show had been trimmed out when it hadn't. They had just been riding on busier days, and so they didn't get to see that part of the script. Mall was there for a long time, but 
on busy days, you have to shorten the robbery to be able to get those trains out on schedule and keep them going. So yeah, there's two versions. You got the 30 minute show and the 20 minute show. They don't last that long. We just call them that based on how often the train went out. Conductors are not engineers and engineers are not conductors. Now this has changed over the years. Way back, they did actually use to switch off and rotate where you might have somebody as an engineer who also conducted and also robbed. A good example of this is one of the guys I worked with, a man named Rick Horde. Rick had driven the engines as an engineer and conducted and robbed. He did it all. And that wasn't unusual 30 years ago. Would do that on a regular basis, but not anymore. Now the engineers, that's the ones who actually drive the train, they're also the mechanics for the train. They work in the roundhouse. They maintain and fix the engines. That's become much more specialized. It's not somebody who's just out there kind of playing. They work hard. And even if they're not on the engine, they're probably working on the engines in the roundhouse. The conductors, those are the ones who take care of the passengers, not up in the engine. And the robbers, they are the part of the same group. And you can be a conductor one day and a robber the next day and go back and forth. Generally anymore, you're not going to be an engineer if you're a conductor and robber. We did have occasional special events. We did have one time that one of our engineers joined us for a short time robbing because he was just hysterically funny. We have had moments where the conductors have been able to ride in the engines for work purposes and other special things. On my last day, I was given the opportunity to briefly drive the engine. Um, I actually passed on it because I'm a weirdo. I had more fun watching the actual engineer drive than doing it. We did occasionally have specials like that, but they were the rare exception. Generally, engineers and conductors are separate jobs. Engineers can't hear the conductor's spiel. The sound system that you hear when riding on the train where the conductor is spieling, telling you all about the different stops and locations and everything else, the engineer doesn't hear that. There is a sound system with a speaker built in right by the engine, and the conductor can talk to the engineer. But to do that, he actually has to flip a switch that allows him to talk only to the engineer. That way the passengers don't hear what he's saying and vice versa. If the conductor's talking to the passengers, the engineer doesn't hear that. There are radios that allows the conductor and the engineer to talk to each other, but you generally try to keep radio traffic down because you don't need everybody else in the park hearing it. So if it's just something that the conductor can tell the engineer real quick or needs to, that works. So occasionally you may hear an odd train whistle. It's probably the conductor has said something to the engineer and said, give me a quick toot if you heard me. Something like that. They do use it actually a couple times during the ride. I don't want to give that exactly away, but it is used on a regular basis. Even just something to let the engineer know that all the passengers are ready. The conductor will actually use it to tell the engineer we're good to go. Kind of a neat little thing that you may not realize they do. The robbers actually sign the wall in the robber shack. This is kind of a neat little tradition that the robbers have, and I wish I had taken pictures when I was robbing of this, and I'm kicking myself in the behind for not doing so. But when you rob, even for a day, if you spend a day as a robber out of the robber shack doing the shows for guests, you actually sign the wall. Every year has a little column where everybody who has robbed the train that year has signed, and their names are all there. And so you can actually go out and you can see who has robbed which years. It's kind of a neat little deal, and it decorates the walls of the robber shack. The big tragedy of this is when they moved the robbery from the old location to the new one, they didn't preserve the walls from the old robber shack. And so you had 40 plus years of robbers having signed those walls and they just tore the shack down instead of saving all of that. I don't even know that anybody took pictures of it. it it's kind of sad. But it is kind of cool that for those who get the chance to rob the trains and work out there, they can actually look on the walls and see the names of everybody who has come before. Uh, and yes, I do have a couple interesting nicknames up on that wall. I hope someday to get pictures of it. It's such a cool thing. And you know, hey, if you're one of the guys out there, take pictures and send them to me. Next year's going to be the 60th anniversary of that train. The train at Silver Dollar City is actually the very first ride that they put into the park. It's the original, and it's only a year or two behind the park itself, having grown into a park from just cave tours. So it dates back a long ways, 60 years 
it was awesome that I was able to work there my very first year as the 50th anniversary. And that was a lot of fun. I don't know if they're going to do anything special for it. They should. But 60 years of train rides out at Silver Dollar City next year, 2022. That'd be cool. I'll, I'll be out there for some fun with that. The Frisco line actually helped lay down the rails for that train as well. This is something you may not realize. There's a reason it's called the Frisco Silver Dollar Line. The San Francisco-St. Louis Railroad, it was called the Frisco for short, ran out through the whole area. Well, back when they built the train at Silver Dollar City, they cut a deal with Frisco that they actually came out and helped lay down the rails, helped get the train all set up, and in exchange for it, they were allowed to put their sign and brands up on the train. It was free advertising as far as they were concerned, and when Frisco was bought by Burlington Northern, the name kind of disappeared, but because of the deal with Silver Dollar City, they were able to still keep using the name and the logo and the brand. So if you were looking for official Frisco, Silver Dollar City is really the only official Frisco line left. Kind of neat little bit of trivia. So there are eight things that you may not have known about the train at Silver Dollar City. Do you still have more questions, other things you'd like to know? Let me know in the comments. Do you got something I may not know? Let me know as well. Thank you so much to my YouTube members and my patrons for their financial support. Help provide some of the footage and so much more. If you want to know about the perks that come with that, check the description. There's also links down there to my fan pages, contact information, gear, and so much more. So check the description. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share. And thank you so much for watching. God bless. So yes, if you've been writing that robbery for, or if you've been writing the robbery, that would be kind of weird. <laughs> there was a time when what we know of as Dollywood was a, what well, it wasn't originally. There are radios that are on the back of the train and up in the engineer's cabin, booth, no. The robber shacks have, okay. If you were ever to take a day robbing out of the, huh. The train ride will be huge there. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to know about contact information, fan pages, merchandise, and more, please be sure to check the description below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to know when I have new ones, well, make sure you hit that subscribe button right up there. And if you want to see another one of my videos, well, I've got a great one for you right here. And a huge thank you to these wonderful people here who support me on Patreon and with YouTube memberships. They get behind the scenes information, special perks, and more. If you'd like to know more about that, well, make sure you check that button right there. Thank you so much.